How are you all doing, everyone? Sam here, United People's TV, back with a special video this one. And it's one I'm definitely, definitely looking forward to doing. Thank you very much to Mark Lambert for joining me today. Mark is a recruitment analyst, specialist. He knows more about recruitment than I do, and probably about you than you do as well. And we're here to talk about Urian Timber. Of course, Urian Timber is one of the names linked with Manchester United, Mark. And you're a man who's watched a lot of every division. You watched all the divisions inside uh, the, the Netherlands leagues and You've you've watched plenty of Yuri and Timber. Is he, uh, in your personal opinion, is he is he a player that you actually are excited by, and you understand why Eric Ten Hag would want to bring him to Manchester United? Oh yeah, I completely understand why uh, he wants to bring him in, and also um, I think it's also the type of player Manchester United can use uh, in going forward. Because uh, if we're honest, a lot of the whole tactical plan and system needs to be an overhauled, you know, rebuild. And that needs to be done not only on the pitch, but as well in different areas of the club, as you uh, are well aware of. Uh, but um, I think the intention of a player like Timber um, shows both the ambition of the Hag as a player, uh, but also I think uh, it's a big step as well. Um, it's not it's not always a good a marriage between coming to, from the Eredivisie to, to the Premier League. So I think he will be growing still. His ceiling is high. Um, the complete player isn't isn't there yet, but I'm very excited for such a player to come to the Premier League as, and, and also excited for uh, Ten Hag uh, to implement them. Yeah, I, 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 whether or not he leaves, obviously the story is going to chop and change. We're hearing stories that maybe he'll stay at Ajax because of the World yeah. Cup and, and keeping a place there. But what I'm going to do now is that you've written an excellent uh, scouting report on Urian on Medium, and I'm going to pull up a couple of graphs that you've, that you've created on there. And this one in particular, this is, I suppose, uh, it's used quite a lot these days, this sort of exit, this chart which compares. Um, so the, number, the higher the number is, the higher the percentile he is in comparison yeah. to everybody else inside the area division. So basically, the higher, the closer it is to 100, the better Yuri and Timber is. That's the way to explain it. But if you can just sort of explain this uh, graph to people and sort of, how, how does that show what sort of player Yuri and Timber is and where his strengths are? Um, uh, yeah, so I compared all all the players on, this, on the same positions he's played uh, with at least 900 minutes because that gives a, a representative bit, image. Because if you only play two games and you have very good data, then it uh, will distort the data. Um, and it shows us not only that he is scoring high in a certain area like defense duels he's, he's scoring i would say well uh, not elite or top but he does very well and in area duels he scores below average now what does that say he's he's on the shorter side he will not always go into aerial duels and if he does some play, players might be better but on the yeah. ground to do ground duels Quite quite a lot of United fans that are, that are looking at uh, Yuri and Timber, they're using his height as one of the main concerns about his game. Yeah. Is that is that something that you think would be a problem inside the Premier League? Or does he play a different style of defending to sort of avoid that weakness, if you know what I mean, as much as possible? I think that if it's purely defensive, um, I, w I think it would be a, a bigger problem if you're playing a lower lower table side where you're much more defending less dominant on the ball um yeah I, I understand the concern because it's not looking very good the aerial duels one uh but just like you mentioned he does play around a little bit more and he gets coverage from his teammates as well so it's also implementing ideas and, and uh, having a complementing center back or full back next to him who will help him out so I would I wouldn't judge someone alone on his on his height, um, but something definitely worth looking into. Uh, and I, I think that obviously the two most impressive numbers there, are, and that's the thing about Yuri and Timber is it, obviously he's a very he's a decent. You're right. You're right in saying that he's not an elite defender when you're talking about defensive duels. When you're talking about he's it, the numbers are good, but where he is elite, you can see it there. It's to do with the progression of the ball. It's to do with how he brings it forward. It's to do with his passes into the final third. Would you say that is the, the greatest natural strength to his game is, is how confident he is with the ball at his feet? Yeah, so um, what he's good at, and you can see in the, in the progression of the ball and also progression in length of uh, yards uh, on the pitch, he's doing very well. And 
being comfortable on the ball uh, as a player, uh, as a defender, is something of more of the modern game. And in doing so, he also opens up space for other players in the midfield and an attack to uh, yeah go into unmarked territories or unseen territories, and that also opens more possibilities in attack. So I think that in terms of being involved in the constructing of an attack and the build-up play, um, he can be, play a vital role uh, for Manchester United. Yes, uh, I, I would I would say uh, one thing that I've noticed, as I said, I've probably watched the last like six or seven games of the Eredivisie season after the Eric Ten Hag stories really came out because I wanted to see how the team played. And for me, Timber was probably the player that stood out the most. Uh, one thing that's definitely part of his uh, a strength of his game, which you cover it in inside with this graph here, is looking about his, his overall positions. Now, yeah. of course, he's been linked with Manchester United as a centre-back, but he has played as a right-back. What would you say has been... What's been his best position at Ajax this season under Eric Ten Hag? Has it been as a centre back? Has it been as a right back, or has he just been as good in both? I think it's, uh, it also depends who, who else is playing. Because uh, centre backs are all about the pairing um, and the ball progression. I think that if he plays on the on right back, he's more involved in the attack because you make runs down the line. Yeah, you you're looking to play out of in position. You invert or you go uh, wide. Um, that is more strong attacking side. Um, but also his well, not his downfall, but he who will commit to a little bit more errors in transition. So I would say he's more stable in centre back position um, and, and progressing from there. But he has such a attacking contribution to the game that um, I would say if we're looking at Manchester United and you want to progress the ball and you were looking at using your full works a lot uh, and Ten Hag uses his full works a lot or he wants to use them if you don't use them that's the question but I think uh, and, his, and his profile uh, I would say uh, right back would suit him the best um, but yeah it's difficult to assess right now but in my opinion right back would be the best option right now well, that's very interesting to know. Um, so I don't think that's something that... I think United fans have considered the idea that because our fullbacks, we've got wan we've got Delo at right back. Neither of them are really going to be good enough for Ten Hag's fullbacks. Because uh, as you say, he, he really does like to use the fullbacks a lot. But in, obviously, we're, we're talking about the strengths of him going forward, the strengths of him in the transition. But this graph you pulled up here, I found this particularly interesting because this sort of identifies kind of where Yuri and Timber plays. Uh, yeah. So if, if you could sort of explain this to, to, to the viewers, what where you've written it there, like where does he make his defensive actions? Like where, where does he jump into the tackle? Where where does he win the ball back? If you it looks like he maybe you can kind of see what you're talking about there, about his strengths being on the right hand side and sometimes a little bit further up. Yeah. So um I think that ball recovery is well, it's a recovering of the ball. Um and that can happen by duels, interception, tackles doesn't matter how, but you can see a very strong uh, red area on the right side. Also because I is dominant, plays higher up the pitch, so they will regain ball recovery a little bit higher than other uh, teams would. Now, an interception uh, if he tackles is, is also a, a thing of playing style. So if you are strong in setting the ball, you are a proactive player because you you see where the ball is, you see the passing lines, you try to intercept them, and from there, if you have the ball, you can immediately tra transition into attack. So that is, that's, that's the mark of a, of a proactive player. Tackles is usually used as a last resort in, in, in the own defensive third, or to block a transition high up the pitch. So what you see is a little bit different areas when, when you're playing tackles. Um, high up the pitch will also mean Everyone is high up the pitch and then they lose the ball and they want to immediately regain possession again. But also, yeah, if a player, uh, Ajax and Ten Hag do have difficulties on the break on transition. Um, it has become a bit better over the years. So he has worked on it, especially with uh, Mitchell van der Gaar. But still, if, if the counter-attack comes and, and everyone's high up the pitch, you need to make a tackle to uh, last resort. And then you can see, especially on the right side and in the penalty area a little bit, 
um, that is where he tackles. So I, I, what I in, find interesting about Julian Timber, Timber is that a central defender of a fullback is either proactive or reactive most times. Yeah. And he, depending on where he plays, he can be a bit both. So that is also his versatility and being versatile that comes out um, if you look at uh, this positional data. And I suppose that will change according to who, what team is being played against, whether you want yeah. to be proactive, reactive. I mean, the Premier League, you know, it is a different, well, obviously it's a different league to the Eredivisie. It will be a little bit more intense. The, the, the level of the team will go up substantially. And it's, uh, you're talking about there about different teams. And maybe if you're going to be playing the newly promoted teams and how they're going to be attacking differently. United, for a long, long time, we haven't been able to control possession enough. That's that's one thing that has to change under Ten Hag is building out from the back with the ball. Um, now we've run through there quite a bit on Yuri and Timber, but I found this this graph, this scatter graph, I think it's called, uh, quite yeah. in, quite interesting in particular. It's sort of comparing uh, its progressive passes per ninety versus versus the progressive runs, and basically, the higher and further up you are on towards the right hand side, the better you are. Right? Is, is that how these graphs work? Yeah. So. Um... Every data has its own context, but because without the context, data is just a bunch of numbers, really. Yeah. Um, progressive passes per 90 shows the intention of playing forward and having a, a, a minimum of a couple of yards going forward. Now, as you can see, he's doing very well, and the players that are better than him are his teammates. Um, Danny, uh, Daily Blend, sorry, Daily Blend is doing exceptionally well uh, in that resort. Is, really is, is that from progressive passes, yeah? Yeah, he's, he's miles ahead, I would say, in the Eredivisie. But progressive runs is not only um, how far you run, but also how f with the ball or without the ball, how much you take the ball into a, another area of the pitch. Yeah. So um, you can also measure this by dribbles or carries on the pitch. And he's doing very well uh, when you look at, uh, at the defenders. Um, so I would say his progression on the pitch is something, is, I think, one of his better qualities and also a sign of a modern defender, which is very important in possession of the ball. And if you want to play dominant football, uh, that's good. It's, it gives you an, an option in attack. You have more options in attack, but also you relieve pleasure of pressure yeah. on other players and I think if United changes the style we'll, the emphasis on central defensive two will also be different and then we'll also see for example another Harry Maguire for example and just it's all about balance in the team I mean Harry Maguire strikes me as a defender that just won't work really uh, in the Eric yeah. Ten Hag you're talking about playing with a high line leaving that space in behind to allow you to be more aggressive win the ball back earlier but you do that when you've got the pace to cover the gap behind you, when your defence can cover those spaces, which simply isn't part of of his game. And if we were, if we were to, if we were to pull this up here again, yeah, what, what would you, where would you say his weaknesses are? I mean, obviously you've you've got the aerial jewels, which is that's physical. It's just his height. You know, he's not going to be as good as someone who's six foot two. That kind of goes without saying, but. I compare him to Caviar, Canav Fabio Cannavaro, won the Ballon d'Or and the World Cup, and he's about roughly the same height. So it's not as if you can't be a good elite centre back simply because you're not six foot nine. But what would you say are, are any weaknesses that you feel may come to the fore if he if he moves? Obviously, he's only twenty. You know, he's he's still got a lot of growing to do. Is he's not the complete article yet, is he? No, no, definitely not. He needs, I would say, a good two seasons to get there. Uh, doesn't mean he he won't play, but I still think that he's not a ceiling yet. Um, and in terms of, I think he, it's, a, it's not a mentality thing, but it, he needs to mature a little bit in his game. So he's very eager uh, to make a good impression. He's very eager to defend. So sometimes he is reckless in his defending. And um, because the, it, it's a difference between the air division and the Premier League and it's in, in England in, in general is that it's very much transition based football. So you need to be strong, you need to be able to have a make a lot of yards, uh, uh, you need to have pace and you, you're constantly going back and forth. And that also means that if you are caught on the break and you have to defend, you have to 
be uh, you be make sure you're composed in your in your stature you make sure not only commit to last resort tackles but sometimes you just need your body your aura defending with your aura to you know uh, force a, uh, an attack an opponent to do something and i think he can learn a lot on that side of defending so everything is there but he needs to be where do i use my energy where do i pace myself where do i commit to a tackle and where let it go when do i need to grab a yellow card or when it's unnecessary. And this is something I don't want to overgeneralize, but something we see a lot in, in younger players. So they need to get a bit more and more momentum, but he, he does play a lot. So he, he's a fast learner, but I think in that regard, sometimes he commits to fouls which are unnecessary. So I suppose what, what you what you are saying is that he needs to he needs to be coached for another couple of years. And, and I, I guess that nobody's going to be better place than Eric Ten Hag to continue that coaching that he's already started, uh, which will probably lead to my last question to you. Um, now, the Dutch national team is pretty stacked in that position. You've got, yeah. you've got Van Dijk there, you've got De Ligt, I mean, that, that seem the two obvious standouts. Uh, then you've got Bruno Martins Indy who can play there. Uh, you've got, uh, was it De Vrij as well? And then you've got Timber who wants to get into that team. Yeah. Do you think he's got, because that that's what's being sort of, told to Manchester United fans at the moment that maybe staying at Ajax would give him a greater chance to get into that Dutch squad. But me looking at it from the outside, um, I'm not sure even if he played every week at Ajax that he would get him become a first choice to play alongside Van Dijk. Does he have a chance if he plays every week, do you think? Well, Louis van Gaal, you never know, <laughs> obviously. Mm -hmm. But um, I, it's all about delivering. And that's also why he didn't select Wijnaldum now. So he says, last few games, last few games he was with the Dutch national team, he didn't deliver, so he's not in it. I think that in Van Dijk, De Ligt and De Vrij have three very good central defenders, uh, top top quality defenders, but also they are aging. So I, I'm I'm very sure that uh, Timbo will get chances to show himself, but I'm not sure he, if he he will be uh, one of the leading uh, defenders yet. He he is up there. He he could very well be in uh, a good uh, a good substitution, or if someone is is injured, he will definitely play. But there's the question of is he good enough yet, and will and can he play? He can play definitely because all the, all the other the lift was also 17 when he started with the national team. It's all about the balance in the squad, and he needs to be coached on the field as well. So I think uh, combination with experience might help him i think he's good enough to uh play for the dutch national team i don't think he will be a regular starter uh as of yet but um i don't yeah i, 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 I don't think the the, the uh, staying at ajax will increase his chance per se I, I, that's that's what it looks like for me from the outside looking in but i'm not it's not i'm not an expert in that situation but look I'm really, really glad I had a chance to talk to you today because for me, looking at Yuri and Timber, I can see that he's not a complete product and I don't think any player is at the age of 20, if, it be, if we're being completely honest. Um, but he's got a lot of characteristics in a defender that we just do not have if Eric Ten Hag's style of play is going to be implemented at Manchester United. And that's why I'm so excited about the idea of him coming in. So I want to say thank you today for, for your time, Mark, because yeah. it, feel, it feels like we've run through there. Let me run, let me pull this all up again. We run through sort of like looking at his chart, looking at where his strengths are. We talked about versatility, where he's actually likely to play and sort of be aggressive or sometimes sit back. We took a look at how progressive he is. And look, Daily Blind, that's by the way, we didn't mention it there. That is ridiculous how far yeah. across Daily Blind is. And that's why he's sort of, and I was quite sad when he left Manchester United. And I was like, yeah, I was kind of annoyed that he got sold when he did. I think we could have kept him. It is what it is with Daddy Blind. But, yeah, that's, but look, but, that's how life goes. <laughs> but look, Mark, thank you very much for your time today. I will leave uh, a link to your Twitter. I'll also leave a link to this uh, full article over on Medium from Mark if you want to give it a read yourself. Uh, maybe, Mark, hopefully we can speak in the future, maybe about other players you've, you've taken a look at. And fingers crossed, if Yuri and Timber comes into United, right? Yeah, well, let's see how it works out. Cheers, buddy. I appreciate your time today. Have a good yeah, weekend. Yeah. Okay, thank you.